you should have downloaded the zip file PLC display test dot zip and you know where it's saved on your computer and let's go restore it we'll go up here to file restore project bring that dialog box up and we're going to navigate I know it's stored over here in my documents so I will type PLC and you see it want to finish the rest of it for me PLC display test dot zip select it and it's saying hey wait a minute you already have another one of these name that because that's where I created it so I'll go ahead and uh, rename it give it a new name I don't want to overwrite my project I'm just going to give it a new name so we'll go ahead and do that it's going to restore it and put it back into into my directory here and if I look down here and you'll see here's the original PLC display test that I created now here's the one I just re restored so I'm going to take that highlight it double click on it and it'll bring everything up load everything up and this is how I have my prophecy environment set up I've got my feedback zone set up as a tab you have your info viewer here control IO don't need to worry about that right now and if I come down here over in this area I have the inspector for properties so I can click over here and next next there's the navigator a little bit more next and there's the variables so let's go show you the variables this should line up with what you have wired up you've got push button one you see down here it's on input one push button two is also on input two pb3 is on input three pb4 input four hoa goes to input five ls1 input 6. LS2 is wired up to input 7 and your overload input is connected up to input 8. Now I have an output here called blink out and that's a memory output or an internal coil output. We'll learn more about that. Now here are your direct lamp outputs. Lamp 1 out Q1. Lamp 2 out Q2. 3 out Q3, 4, out Q4, 5, out Q5, and finally lamp 6, out Q6. I don't think I'm using Q8, so what I'm going to do here is right click and delete unused variables. That's kind of nice. Let's see if that'll take it away. Yes and see it just deleted output 8 which I did not need okay those are all of, all of our variables and those need to be defined before we would start going I'm going to go back over here to project navigator and here's everything here that you need to do now we we'll come over here to main rack and you see I have set here CPU IC 200 UDR005 because that's what's connected up to my computer and it's also what is in the classroom okay you'll need to come over here and right click on it and select replace module here we go now your module is an IC200 UDR001 we'll select that and hit OK yes I do wish to continue yes and here we go now you want to come up over here to passwords and if it says enabled you want to double click on it and make sure that disabled is checked okay and then we can close that tab now we've set the here are your program blocks open this three here and click on double click on main and here comes the program so if we're looking at this if 
these contacts are closed, PB1 contacts are closed, the lamp will turn on. Or if this output called blink out causes these contacts to close, your lamp one will turn on. And that, if you look down here, you can see PB1 operates lamp one, PB2 operates lamp two, PB3 lamp three, PB4 lamp four. Now your limit switch one will operate lamp five, limit switch two will operate lamp six. Now that leaves us with two untested input switches. So we have down here, this is where that memory coil comes in. I have our HOA switch, a little timer contacts, and the overload contact. So we need our HOA to be closed, and overload one to be closed, and these timer contacts closed, and that'll turn on this coil blink out. When that turns on, all of these blink out contacts will close, and all of your lights will start blinking at one second intervals. Okay, we have our program here. The next thing we need to do is download it and install it into the computer. So, you'll want to go up to Target. Okay, so we'll want to go up to Target. Go online with Target 1. It goes through its things. You can see it going through and connecting. The status thing status bar will show up and if you look down here you'll see some information you'll see some sweep time you'll see some logic and everything information I've downloaded this program into it so it's telling me my configuration is equal and my logic is equal and it's also in run mode so I'm gonna come up here to target online commands and set the programmer mode again target online commands stop the controller remember we cannot give the PLC new commands while it's heading down the road we have to stop it first now I look down here it's we're in programmer mode stop disabled mode configuration equal logic equal yours will probably say NE and sweep time zero milliseconds meaning it's stopped so target we're going to do this download and start. Now my feedback zone tab comes up and this is where you want to watch to make sure there are no errors. It's going through and compiling and putting together all the structures necessary for this. Have all three of these checked. Said OK. Okay, there I have zero errors, zero warnings. Another one, zero errors, zero warnings. Let's continue through downloading these into the PLC. Okay, now we want to start it with outputs enabled. We're good to go. So let's come over here to main. And you'll see this is green, which means that... And normally what you should see if you're looking at this, all of your contacts should not be green. Mine are green because nothing's connected to them and it's showing all of my lamps being on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called forces. I'm going to force these outputs on or off. So I'm going to come over here, right click on that input and I'm going to force it off. I'm going to do this with all of my inputs. Force them all off selecting them one at a time forcing them off and again I'm doing this because I do not have I don't have my input connected to this PLC okay force off force off now you notice the normally closed ones are already on so what I'm going to do is hit highlight this switch and hit my F12 key if you look over here you see F12 is to toggle the IO and so that 
allows that to go off again F12 highlight F12 highlight F12 there now all my lights are off and your lights are sh all should be off at this point so I can try these one by one highlight PB1 push my F12 key lamp comes on turn it off go down to PB2 push the F12 key lamp comes on okay PB3 same thing PB4 it's a way to test this for you so if everything's wired properly it should work just as you saw there if you fire it up and it's everything is blinking then toggle HOA so that you're in this condition here with no power flow through the first contacts no power flow through the second contacts so then let's go over here and make toggle that and now we'll go ahead and toggle the HOA and you see every time blink out turns on all your lamps will turn on so your lamps will be blinking along with blink out now to test it OL input toggle it switch it okay blinking should stop turn it back on again and toggle your HOA in order for blink out to work you should have green 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 every time you have a break and no green that means you have a break in power flow and the coil will not be energized so hopefully everything you have now is working and it's a quick way to test it and I just hit F12 and shut everything off